We all make mistakes, especially when we are drunk. Like those late night texts you send to your ex. However, even your ex may seem like a good option compared to what this one guy did. His decision shook the world economy and caused his bosses to lose $10 million in a single night. This is the story of a drunken trader who was banned after buying 7 million barrels of oil overnight. On June of 2009, a broker named Stephen Perkins was called at 7.45 a.m. by a colleague at the company where he worked, PVM Oil Futures. This clerk wanted to know why Stephen had bought 7 million barrels of crude oil overnight. However, Stephen had no idea what he had done the night before or why he had made such a bad decision for the company. He had negotiated over half a million dollars while drunk. Perkins texted his boss at around 6.30 to inform them that he was feeling unwell while trying to hide his mistake for as long as he could. But unfortunately, it was too late for Perkins to do anything to fix it. After the company asked him to explain himself, he told them that he had been trading along with a client all night. So the firm asked to talk to the client, but it turns out he was lying. His actual clients had been a pitcher of cold beer and possibly a few bottles of wine. But what exactly happened the night before all went to hell? On June 29th of 2009, Perkins had just had the weekend of his life. During a golf event sponsored by his company, he drank a lot of alcohol and returned to London, more than happy with his heroic deed. Afterwards, he continued drinking until noon because the best way to avoid a hangover is to simply keep drinking. After making some trades for a supposed client, Perkins blacked out. However, at 1.22 a.m. on June 30, 2009, he would go on an insane rampage on the oil markets. Perkins had been a broker for Brent Crude since 1998. He was in charge of the company's International Commodity Futures Division. Among his responsibilities was trading futures for his clients. Now, I'm not going to explain to you what futures are since that's such a big topic, but it's basically a promise to buy stuff at a certain price in the future. Get it? Futures. Now, back to the story. While he was barely aware of what he was doing, he traded 7 million barrels of oil valued at $500 million. Before he knew it, Perkins had bought 69% of the world's oil market. Nice. This resulted in a $10 million loss for his company. However, the consequences of Perkins' actions did not go unnoticed by the world. When the incident occurred, international markets were shocked by the sudden oil price increase. In just half an hour, prices had soared by more than $1.50 per barrel. Such a sharp rate of change is usually only caused by events of geopolitical significance, not by Stephen's wild night out. This story is also a test of how vulnerable our system is. After all, if a drunk guy with a laptop can cause so much trouble, no one can guarantee that something similar will never happen again. He was then fined 72,000 British pounds by the Financial Services Authority. Although the fine was going to be doubled, the FSA reduced it to avoid causing the trader financial hardship. In addition, the FSA noted that Perkins was not a fit and proper person to work in the industry due to his alcohol problems. After the incident, the FSA's director of markets, Alexander Jostham, expressed his opinion on the matter. He said Perkins' drunkenness did not excuse him for what he had done and noted that the FSA considers market manipulation extremely serious, even when there is no profit to be made from it. Meanwhile, the U.S. Commodity Futures Trading Commission proposed placing position limits for the futures and gas markets to curb excessive speculation. As a result, Perkins ended up being suspended in July 2009 and joined an alcohol rehabilitation program. To make things worse, he was banned from working in financial services for a minimum of five years for making transactions without the authorization of customers or his employer. Yet two days after the FSA announced its sanctions, he was hired by a Swiss biofuels brokerage firm, Star Supply Renewables, to create manuals for its recruits. According to Star Supply spokesman, the company considered him a good man who did something stupid, so they wanted to give him a chance to rebuild his career. So luckily, his story has a good ending. The most absurd part about the story of Perkins is that he wasn't even in charge of investing the company's money. 
Instead, he had the duty to invest the client's money. So if you are a trader like Perkins and plan to drink alcohol, please stay away from your smartphone and laptop, especially if you are feeling like Warren Buffett in the middle of a late night binge. Please watch the next video on the screen and make sure to hit the subscribe and like button and leave a comment of what you'd like to see next. Thank you.